Dr. Lara Boyd. I'm a professor here at UGC, and I do research into the brain, and specifically how the brain changes if you learn something or if the brain is damaged. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is some of the things we know about the effects of exercise on the brain. So I want to first explain to you um, how the brain changes. It's something called neuroplasticity. And what we know helps it change. I want to talk about the roles of exercise in healthy aging. Uh, and development, and then last, talk a little bit with you or share information with you what we know about exercise and disease prevention in the brain. So one of the things that we've learned in neuroscience in the last 10 to 15 years is that the brain has a remarkable capacity to change, and this is the foundation for any learning that you do in your daily life. This is the foundation also for any recovery that happens after your brain is injured. And this is a process that happens throughout the lifespan. So it's the basis for children learning when they're young, for adults learning through middle age, and then adults continuing to age well into old age. And this is a very exciting and promising field because it allows us to adapt to our environment, to be lifelong learners, and to recover if we're diseased or damaged. So one of the things we know about learning in the brain and the brain's ability to change, to adapt to learning, is it's highly facilitated by exercise. And it doesn't seem to matter a whole lot how that exercise takes place. So you can enjoy walking, running, tennis, it could be strength training, but the brain is very, very um, facilitated by the imposition of exercise or some kind of daily activity. And what we think is helping, um, well, how we think that benefit is inferred, is in several different ways. First of all, when a muscle contracts, we release some chemicals from the muscle itself that then go to the brain through your bloodstream and actually make the brain more able to um, expand nerve cells in the brain, brain cells, which are called neurons, to make their connections more complicated and maybe even grow new nerve cells. So that's one way. And the other way it happens is by through exercise, we're able then to increase blood flow to our brain and in fact, probably even grow new blood vessels in our brain. So the combination of making your nerve cells more able to adapt and this extra ability to deliver food and oxygen via blood to your brain cells allows the brain to be a much more adaptable organ when you're exercising it as compared to when you're not. So the evidence of this comes from children get better grades in school if they're physically active in, associated, in association with their learning. We see better learning in young adults and adults through middle age if they're more active. And even into um, old adulthood, there's this very strong relationship between learning. And this can be learning, by the way, both for learning new mental skills, but also for learning new movements in terms of um, exercise facilitating the brain's capability for responding. So that's a really promising thing. So it's one of the best things you can do to be a better lifelong learner is to continue to exercise. So the second thing that I wanted to share with you as well that really comes off of that is keeping your brain in this more healthy state through exercise also allows you to be a more successful ager, if you will. Individuals who maintain a level of physical fitness and maintain physical activity within their lives are much more successful in maintaining cognitive capability, in maintaining the ability to learn and the ability to respond to challenges both physically and mentally through keeping that exercise related activity in their lives. So if you talk about, you're worrying about preventing dementia in older life, you think you're getting forgetful, you lose your car keys a lot, those types of issues. These are all things that we know are less, less important factors in aging if you're staying healthy and if you're continuing to exercise. And this kind of brings us then to the last important fact here, and that is that we know that people who exercise are much better able to prevent disease. So we have, we've known for many, many years that we have significant reductions in risk factors for cardiac disease, for heart disease, and for stroke um, in people who maintain a level of physical fitness and physical activity. Um, we also know that individuals who are more active and do physical activity regularly are much less likely to get Alzheimer's disease, so they're able to maintain their cognitive abilities longer much less likely to get Parkinson's disease. And so these are some really important things in terms of disease prevention. And we now know, and this is very exciting, um, as we move forward, that for all of those diseases I've just talked about, say you didn't exercise before and now you do have Parkinson's disease or you are suffering from losses in memory, it is never too late to start. 
So you can start a, an exercise program after a stroke, after you have some diagnosis, after you have a diagnosis of cardiac disease, for example, and you're going to see significant benefits in your cognitive capability, your overall brain health, and that's going to translate directly into better health-related outcomes and better health-related quality of life. So if I can give you one piece of advice for your overall brain health, it's pick something you like and do it. Do it at a moderate intensity as often as you can, and I promise you that you'll see benefits in your health, your well-being, and your mental ability.